All right, that is some important global market opinion that we are tracking. But let's now talk about all of the cues that you should track as we get into a fresh trading session. We have our research team here with the trade setup. Nigel, Vivek, as well as Surbi join us now to bring you exactly that. Guys, a very good morning to all of you. And Vivek, let me come to you first. What are the cues looking like this morning? Well, good morning. You know, after uh, almost four straight sessions uh, in this particular week where we saw quite a bit of negative cues as far as global markets were concerned, today finally we are seeing some positive cues coming in. So, you know, the U.S. markets yesterday managed to snap a five-day losing streak and yesterday ended the session with gains. Also, when you're talking about European markets, European markets largely mixed, but yeah, they ended with a positive bias. When you talk about gold prices, you know, continued the gain, a marginal gain yesterday, but, you know, this particular gain was on the back of the fact that the dollar strength... Uh, actually yield uh, in yesterday's trading session as well. Now, coming to crude oil prices, yesterday was quite a volatile trading session. Reports of an outage caused a brief spike before, you know, crude oil prices uh, once again fell and now at a fresh 2022 low. And, you know, Brent futures were down in yesterday's trading session almost 0.7% to the $76 per barrel mark. Now, coming to uh, closer home, you know, today in, in today's trading session, markets will, you know, will cheer the outcome of the Gujarat as well as the Gujarat elections, especially where, you know, BJP won by a handsome majority. Uh, but other than that, you know, it's a largely uh, not even driven trading session. And, uh, you know, Asian markets are trending in the green. LJ52 is indicating a gap up open for the Indian markets. Okay, so we are bracing for a good start, but let's see how we go from there. Let's also now talk about the individual stocks that you should keep on your radar as we get into this trading session. We have Surbhi standing by with that entire list. Surbhi. Hi, thanks for that. I have a few stocks on my radar today. The first one is Hindustan Unilever, where it is going to acquire 100% stake in Zyvi Ventures in two tranches. The first is going to be a 51% uh, this is going to be completed before Jan 2nd, 2023 for 265 odd crores. It is going to acquire the second tranche of 49% three years after the first. It is also going to acquire 20% stake in Nutritional Lab for 70 odd crores. Next is pay, uh, Paytm where they are going to hold a board meeting on 13th of December to consider a buyback. Adani Enterprises where they are going to acquire 100% stake in Alluvial Mineral Resources Private Limited. Lupin, where it appoints Pyro Gavagas as the president of U.S. generic businesses. And also, lastly, insurance companies will be in focus today because the regulator IRDAI has allowed foreign investors, including FPI, to invest in preference shares and subordinated debt issued by the in, uh, insurance companies. It also allows the debt to be listed on this, uh, in the local stock exchanges. All right, Surbhi, thanks a lot for bringing us that entire list of stocks. We are going to keep these on our radar. And finally, I'm going to hand it over to Nigel, who's looking at all of the cues from the futures and options space. Hi, Nigel. Well, good morning. Uh, you know, Pavitra, what a session we had yesterday. The Nifty Bank was breaking out. That did very, very well. While the Nifty as well ended high with a gain of closure around 50 points. In the index futures, well, you had the Nifty. On the Nifty, the open interest was a little bit low. So that's telling you a bit of a short covering bounce did play out there. But the Nifty Bank came back in style, and with the surge that we saw in the Nifty Bank price, you had a big open interest build up as well, telling you that there was fresh buying on that index. What do the FIs do? Well, it's perfectly telling in there. It appears some shots were covered out, while they added some longs as well, though they continue to remain net long on the index. On the options front, first we're looking at the Nifty Bank. Now, out there on the Nifty Bank, we did have, uh, you know, the 43,500 uh, strike that was fairly active. Big surge in terms of open interest, the premiums around 240 rupees. There's a sense that was writing out there, which gives you a bit of a support because at one point of time, the premium on that strike was four to 500 rupees. So you deducted from 43,500 and that's telling you 43,000 is a bit of a support zone. The 42, uh, for, uh, added on 42,800 as well, we did see a bit of a bounce out there and that tallies in with the 20 DMA. So that becomes your support zone. On the Nifty itself, the 18,600 call and the 18,600 put well, they were very active in trade yesterday. So you're getting a bit of a range then to work with. The 20 DMA on the Nifty becomes crucial on the downside, while on the upside, the recent high, closer on the recent high, 18,850. That is a firm resistance, I would say, going by the call writing. So let's see whether or not, uh, you know, we can break out of there. But the SGX if we suggesting a gap up. My sense is don't chase this opening. You'll get a dip intraday. You buy into that dip. You need to buy into the dip, but don't chase the opening because we've seen the evidence is the last few days, if you chase that big opening, you don't make too much money. So keep that in mind. All right. That is the trade set up today. Nigel, Vivek, as well as Surbhi, thank you very much for joining us.